Just how far can social media and the need for validation from social media push a person to do the unthinkable, like killing someone? This was the case of 18-year-old Zachary Latham, who murdered his neighbor simply for TikTok clout. You may be wondering right now, what do you mean he killed his neighbor for TikTok clout? Well, to understand this, let me start from the beginning. Zachary Latham moved into his grandparents' house on Thornhill Road in Vinland, New Jersey. For some reason, he was emancipated by 17, so he had an unusual amount of freedom for someone his age. He had cars that he made sure he showed off any time he got, and as you can see in this photo, you can already tell he's an annoying person. 350Z owner, iHeart 5W30, is that a Tommy dog? Zosiety, neighbors hate you, cuts everybody off, what are blinkers, road rage, loud exhaust, my DE will smoke your HR. Well, these cars that Zachary owned were the cause of the problem because all he did most days was speed around the neighborhood, sometimes hitting up to 100 miles per hour and posting it on TikTok. However, Zachary's neighbors, the Durhams, didn't like all that noise and reported it to his grandparents. Zachary's grandparents obviously reprimanded him and made Zachary read a letter of apology to his neighbors. But, well, that was simply a half measure because soon after the apology, Zachary was back to his old self, posting videos of himself driving his car at high speeds. This was when Catherine Durham said enough is enough and confronted him. This led to Zach making a video of her and calling her Karen. What are you gonna do, Karen? That's not my name, so get my name straight. Go ahead. I'll you okay, Karen? Go ahead, get my tag. Go. Get my tag, Karen. My name is not Karen, so get my name straight. Get my tag, it's okay. You go, Catherine. Zachary posted this video on his TikTok, which became viral, getting over 3 million views. Now, you might love a good Karen name and shame, but that wasn't the case here. This lady was rightfully pissed off. He got a ton of followers who, obviously not understanding more context of the video, took the side of Zachary and told him to do more crazy things to her, such as slash her tires and mess with her more. A lot could be said about this and the parasocial relationship with social media, because after Zachary saw this, he he made it his mission to really mess with the Durhams. This action would start a cascade of events that would cause one of the Durhams to die. So, he starts driving across the Durhams' house, screaming, Hey Karen, we went viral. And he yells out the window, Hey, uh, hey Karen, we went viral. He began to get bold with his videos, revving his car even more in the neighborhood and disturbing the Durhams in particular to get more reactions. Allegedly, Zachary posted himself with a gun with the caption saying, that's how you handle neighbors. The post was deleted. One would think that a dude who became part of the National Guard would, you know, guard people and not cause problems. Oh yeah, he was a member of the National Guard. The Durhams chose to go through the legal route. After the Durhams reported to the police, the police said they couldn't do anything because it was the pandemic and courts had closed. P.S. It's important to note that this guy already had simple assault, criminal mischief, and terroristic threats. But still, why did they ignore all the complaints about an annoying neighbor who was obviously a terror to his neighbors? In fact, Durham's lawyer said that the police and a judge lived in the area and knew of Zachary's actions. In this video, you can see the police saying that they can't do anything, even though there's video evidence. Face, we would arrest you. But you won't do anything even though you saw video proof, correct? Correct. Okay for your video, that is correct. Thank you. Now, here's another video of the Durham son, William Durham Jr. In the video, you can see the Durham son confront and try to drag Zachary out of the car. However, Zachary responded by saying he was armed with a knife. He then posted the video with this caption. Karen's son found out the video went viral and tried taking me out of the car. Blow this up for part three, hashtag Karen, hashtag keeping busy. As you can see, for Zachary, it was just vibes in a game. He wanted to generate content, but for the Durham family, he was truly terrorized. Them. It was reported that the real reason that Durham's son confronted him was that Zachary allegedly posted their address online. This caused people to come to their neighborhood and rev their cars. Honestly, I can only imagine the annoyance the Durham's felt when they noticed it. It's enough to drive anyone crazy. Honestly, for a married man, one can only wonder why he didn't spend more time with his wife. Oh yes, when Zachary turned 18, he got married to Sarah. When all hell really broke loose was when Zachary was driving at high speed and swerved, almost hitting Mr. Durham's son, who was minding his business riding his bike. 
This incident was the last straw for Mr. Durham, who decided to confront Zack himself after two years of dealing with his shenanigans. Zack was now 18, no longer a child, and Mr. Durham had had enough. Mr. Durham pulled his truck into the street to block Latham's truck, and his wife, Catherine Durham, recorded the exchange on her phone. In the video footage, which, by the way, was confiscated by police as evidence, Zachary Latham can be seen throwing an elbow at Catherine, knocking her phone from her hand, and speeding off toward his home. Zack's wife was recording the scene with her phone and walked down the driveway to confront the Durham sons as they came onto the Latham property. The whole family was actually involved in this situation, and they went over there like a squad trying to confront Zack about everything that happened over the course of two years. Sarah Latham, Zack's wife, told the Durham sons they had better back up because they would not like what was coming out of the house. Soon after, William Durham arrived with his truck. Latham's public defenders say in their filing that he and his wife can be heard on the video footage clearly telling the Durhams several times to get off the property, and they are not welcome. The Durhams, their hands visibly empty, continued to approach. There were no weapons involved, but things quickly escalated. After Latham went back inside the house, he actually came back outside with two knives and his stun gun to confront the Durham family. Clearly, this kid wanted to fight. This was when shit hit the fan. He fired his stun gun at one of the sons, and William Durham then grabbed at Latham, who slashed him in the right arm with his knife before retreating into his garage. Both Mr. Durham and Zack were in the heat of the moment, and their adrenaline levels must have been through the roof. They were in full-on battle mode, but it didn't stop there. Afterward, Mr. Durham followed Zack toward the garage he was heading to, and a brief but violent tussle ensued. The stun gun was fired repeatedly, and Zachary's wife urged him to drop the knife. So, why was Sarah Latham recording the whole thing. Well, it turns out that Sarah Latham is a YouTuber and was filming the confrontation for her channel. She wanted to get views and subscribers, but she captured a violent altercation that could have been avoided. This further betresses the point that for Zachary and Sarah, this whole thing was a joke. During the struggle, Zachary stabs William Durham Sr. in his chest, killing him. Here's the 911 call that followed from some of the neighbors. Here's another call made by Zachary, too. Zach then goes on to lie that he had his windpipe broken and they had guns. There were a lot of discrepancies between what happened in this call. For one, 10 people didn't beat him up. Here's the police arriving at the scene. Immediately after the call, the police came to the house, and you could see Zachary and his two friends, Moses Rios and Dylan Aristi. The police started evaluating the situation to know exactly what was wrong and cordoned off the property. Zachary was then arrested and taken to court, where he said it was self-defense. But the Durham's lawyers believe that Latham deliberately drew William to his death in a bid for social media celebrity. They noted that Zachary's wife recorded the brawl on her phone and said she did so, quote, because it was her and Zachary's intent to post these videos to TikTok and become TikTok famous. For that reason, the lawyers argued, the self-defense claim does not hold up. They believe that if Zachary genuinely feared for his or Sarah's safety, they would have retreated inside, called the police, and stayed there. However, they did not do so because they intended to lure the Durhams there, attack them, and record it for TikTok. Manslaughter, aggravated assault, weapons offense. Zachary was officially indicted on two counts of aggravated assault with weapons offenses as well as manslaughter, while Ms. Durham and her sons were charged with assault and trespassing. Zachary was released temporarily while waiting for his main trial. Wow. Zachary, who is now 20 years old, was indicted on charges of second degree reckless manslaughter, aggravated assault, and weapons offenses. These charges were as a result of the May 4, 2020 brawl, the brawl that ended in the stabbing death of William T. Durham Sr., who was a senior corrections officer at Southwood State Prison. The killing was the result of a long-running feud between Zachary and the Durham family, who lived near each other in a Vinland neighborhood. The TikToker has maintained that he acted in self-defense in the Durham stabbing and said the video would prove his innocence. Attorneys for the Durham family had sought a murder charge in the case and claimed Zachary lured the victim into the bloody showdown in a bid for, quote, TikTok fame. Following his pre-trial release from jail, 
while soon after the killing, Zachary relocated to Florida while he awaited trial. One would think the young man would behave and act like a good citizen, but sadly, that isn't the case for Zachary. He was arrested in Florida after allegedly threatening someone with a pellet gun. Although he was later released with an ankle monitor in that case, he surrendered to the authorities after his New Jersey release was revoked in 2021. Under the terms of his New Jersey release, he was prohibited from publicly commenting on the case, but continued posting about it on social media, the court found. At this point, if the court locks him up and throws away the jail, no one will blame them. Zachary's lawyer, Nathan Perry, said that the media is paying too much attention to the case, which is not fair. He also added that people were being mean to Zachary by harassing and threatening him, causing him to lose his job in Florida. To him, these people were like modern-day lynch mobs, which is not right. Interesting how the crowd that goaded him into messing with the Durhams turned against him. This case has been highly publicized, and many have opinions on what happened that fateful day. However, as Superior Court Judge Kristen DiArgio rightly noted, this is a legal court. The matter will be resolved on legal grounds, not on opinion grounds. The jury's determination is a legal decision, not an opinion decision. The court trial date is still waiting to be set. I'm really hoping the full arm of the law comes on Zachary Latham and gives the Durham family some peace. This case is a cautionary tale of the dangers of social media, police negligence, and being a terrible person. I hope we all understand that clout is a drug we shouldn't overdose on.